Today we're making a graveyard skeleton monument that towers 8 feet tall. Now this monument can be built as a standalone statue or as a graveyard monument, so join me for this amazing tutorial. To begin, we need a life-size skeleton. Now, these are available at a plethora of stores. I got this one from Home Depot. They're usually available at the end of August, early September. If they made a taller one, I would have gotten it, but there was none available. Anyways, we need to start by filling it in with expanding foam. Since we're gonna be using monster mud, we don't want these cavities to remain empty. So I'm going to lay down some uh, paper on the ground, lay it down flat and fill it in with expanding foam to fill in all of these holes and cavities that it has on its body. So let's get started. Before we continue with this tutorial, I wanted to show you all the first book that I've written. It's called Little Olive and the Wally Bat, and it's rated for kids ages two to six years old. It follows a brave little olive that gets lost and is found by a very helpful brown bat. This is the first book I've ever written and I'm super excited about it. It's available on Amazon via paperback or Kindle. So if anyone wants to support me or read it to their kiddos, go check it out. The link is in the bio of the video, Little Olive and the Wally Bat on Amazon. Now let's get back to this amazing tutorial. So before we put expanding foam, I'm gonna put some of this painter's tape on areas that I don't want the expanding foam to come out of. Even if we wouldn't use tape, it's very easy to cut off any excess expanding foam. So this is just an extra step just to make my life a little bit easier. I'm gonna put it along the ribs here in the front, on the back, just in areas that I want it contained in because we definitely wanna be able to see the rib outline, but I just wanna get rid of some of this empty space. So I'm using Great Stuff Expanding Foam. This is for gaps and cracks. So it expands a lot and we definitely want that expansion. So I've shaken these cans, both of them, for 60 seconds each so we get a good shake in. And now let's start filling. So for the base, we're gonna be using a two by 10. So this is two inches thick by 10 inches wide. And I've cut this piece to 24 inches. We have this flange here that we're gonna use. We're gonna place it right in the center and this adapter that goes screwed right in there just like so. We're going to use four screws and attach it right there. And then we're gonna get our PVC pipe and put it right in here. The PVC size we're using is one and a half inches. So let's get to it. Now we need to build a support for the skeleton. So we need to cut PVC pieces. Remember, all our PVC is an inch and a half. So this one's gonna be 46 inches. This was the main piece. We're gonna put some PVC cement if you like in here, and we're simply gonna put it in there. Then, right over here, I have a T-joint. You could just do an elbow instead, but I didn't have any other elbows left, so I'm just gonna use this T-joint right here. Just like that. Then for the shoulder, shoulder blade, it's five and a half inch PVC piece. Then we're gonna use the only elbow that I had, just like this. And then for the arm support, this is 11 inches. We're gonna put it right here like this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand up the skeleton with its arm raised like this. So you can just tilt this up just like that. And then we're gonna glue everything with PVC cement so it's nice and stable, and that way, the skeleton is supported and the weight from the monster mud is supported for it to dry properly. So let's glue it all together. As you can see, we simply attached the skeleton to the PVC with zip ties. We put a zip tie along his spine, along the hip, and two zip ties along the arm. See, I also put expanding foam on the arm. I'm gonna cut this off. I just didn't want there to be any gaps like they are right here. This is gonna be covered. So I'm gonna cut this off so it looks more like a solid piece of bone. And I'm probably gonna trim a little bit more pieces along the collar 
and maybe some over here. But now we need to put something on the back. I have some styrofoam pieces left over that I'm going to attach here just with some tape. You could even do some expanding foam because we want to make sure that the back comes out a little bit for when it drapes over, that it gives it some volume to it. So we're good. We just have to do the little uh, additions and we're good for the next step, which is monster mud. Okay, now we've reached the part where we need to put monster mud. So before that, you wanna get your drop cloth. These are used for paint. They're made out of burlap. You wanna dress your skeleton first with it so you can get an idea of what you want it to look like once you apply the monster mud soaked rags on top of it. So this is how I have it here. In order to help me, I've actually put a few screws in places. I've made a hole into the fabric, put a screw in there so that I know that when I get to that area, I can just use the screw as a support. As you can see right here, it's holding it nicely, but there's a hole in it so it's easy just to pull it out like this. So then, once you get it going like this, now we can go to the monster mud. We're gonna remove all of this, we're gonna dip it in our monster mud mixture, and we're ready to go. One important thing, you can find so many recipes of monster mud online, but I've made an awesome tutorial. I'm gonna put the link right up here. There should be a pop-up on the top where I show you how to do four different types of monster mud. I'm using one of those methods myself. So go over there, check my video. It's called Monster Mud Tutorial. You should be able to see it and learn so much more about monster mud. So check it out to know how to do the perfect recipe. To make our monster mud, we're going to be using dry lock, joint compound, and exterior grade paint. We're going to mix all of that together. To build the statue's pedestal, we need to get insulation foam board. Now they sell these in sheets of four foot by eight foot tall. So this one is two inches thick. We're gonna get it and cut it to whatever size we want. There's different sizes, different heights. I'm gonna make mine almost four feet tall. It's gonna be about three and a half feet tall. And you can make it as wide as you want, as deep as you want. This is super easy to cut. You can cut it with a knife or with a jigsaw. I'm gonna use a jigsaw, it makes it super easy. So once you get it, pick the design you want. I already made a basic rectangle right there. And after we cut it, we can carve the front to say whatever we want it to say. So let's get going. So here's the rough look at what our pedestal looks like. As you can see, you can make it whatever you want. I've just added a second piece on top so it can be more of a layered look, but you can do anything. You can make it taller, you can make it thinner. Um, that's what I love about insulation foam board that it's so easy to cut and so easy to build things with. So I haven't glued anything together, but I'm gonna be using expanding foam. I'm gonna be using the window and door trim because it doesn't expand as much. Um, I'm gonna use it as an adhesive. Put some in here, put some on the inside along the walls to glue all of this together. And I can't wait, it's gonna be great. Also, it's important to note that since the statue is gonna be tall, you wanna make sure we secure it properly so it doesn't fall over or topple over. So I'm gonna be making a hole right in here and another hole on this platform. Then on the bottom of the statue, remember we made it out of wood, we're going to attach another flange, this time upside down. And then attached to the flange, it's gonna be a PVC adapter like we did earlier with the statue. Then we're gonna put a piece of uh, PVC all the way to the ground. And I always use rebar here to stabilize things. We're gonna drive a rebar into the ground. Then we're going to put PVC over the rebar so that even if you push it, the statue wouldn't fall over. And that way, you're, it's safe and secure and it's not gonna fall over. 
So before we glue anything together with expanding foam, we want to carve out whatever it is we're gonna put over here in the front. So in my previous videos that I have on my account, I show you how to carve tombstones and awesome things on insulation foam board. So I would definitely recommend check that video out and take a look at it so you could learn how to carve properly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna print out whatever I need. It's probably gonna be words, maybe a design. I'm going to glue it on here with Elmer's glue once it dries, I'm gonna grab my Dremel tool and then I'm going to carve it all out. It's super easy, super fun. Definitely check out my video if you wanna learn how to carve tombstone and other awesome things with insulation foam board. So once we do that, then we can glue everything together and then we can actually paint it and then we're almost done with the base. Super simple. Now it's time to carve out what's gonna go in the front of the tombstone. As you can see, I printed out this quote that I really like that's gonna go carved in the front. This is just you know, a Microsoft Word document that we printed. So once you get your quote out there, you simply put it here and we're going to use some Elmer's washable glue. When it's wet, it's purple, and when it dries, it is clear. We're gonna place some on the back and on the board. Place it like this, we're gonna pat it down and once it dries after a couple of hours, we can grab our Dremel tool and carve everything out. You also wanna put a line. I used a level. I got my marker to make sure that I had a straight line so that the words will all look nice and straight. I did it to that side as well. What I love about this is that you can really print any size, any font, and just print whatever you want. And that's how I did all my tombstones as well. So you should definitely check out that video to learn how to properly carve, so let's get to it. Next, we need to give the tombstone some texture. The words look perfect, but this is just too flat. So I have my bottle of water, and we're just gonna spray some water. Definitely want water droplets to form. And once you spray it good, then we're going to get our heat gun, and we're going to apply heat. Do not apply heat around the words, because then it'll expand them, and you'll lose this look. So make sure you just do it around, and you don't want to do it on everything either. I'm just going to do it here, maybe here, some sections here, just to give it a more natural, aged look. So let's start. So just like this, as you can see, look what's happening to the skin. Or should I say to the surface. So we're just going to do it in sporadic sections, because this is perfect. For the cracks, we're simply using an X-Acto knife. We're going like this as if we're making a crack, and then we go next to it to cut it out just like so. This part is tedious, but it's super fun because it allows you to put all these awesome details. So all these cracks are just done with an X-Acto knife. Like I mentioned previously, I made an entire video on how to do this look. Um, it's only dealing with tombstones. Go see how I did my tombstone tutorials. It'll save you so much time and trouble. If you learn how to do one, you know how to do them all. So definitely check it out.
So now we have to do the final details, which is painting it with different shading. I'm gonna be using a dark gray, maybe some black, maybe grab a little bit of moss and attach it to it, but we definitely need to highlight the places such as the eye sockets, some of the teeth, the rib cage, and definitely some of the hand bones and just places throughout. So grab some stain or some latex paint and let's start shading.